Hey, hello, my fifth grade. I'm so happy to see you today. Well, I'm not seeing you. You're seeing me, but I got to see you a few days ago, and I'll get to see you again in a couple days, or tomorrow, I think. Anyways, um, glad to be here with you, talking about grammar. We're going to go over your pages of review, and we're going to start the new chapter today, which I'm excited because it's poetry, which is one of my favorite things. Um, I know it's not everybody's favorite thing, but it's one of my favorite things, so we're going to do it. Anyways, I want to go over pages 99 and 100 with, with you, which were, they might have been kind of hard because some of that stuff we haven't talked about in a long time. But I'm just going to go over the answers, and I want you to follow along, check in, and fill in your answers, okay? So let's look at page 99. Now, 99, um, yeah, I can think. Okay, I haven't had all my coffee yet, so like, shh, 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 can't see. Page 99, you're writing abbreviations. So we need to review these because they're important. So number one, Friday is abbreviated capital F R I period. Number two, Thursday is capital T A capital T H U R S period. Tuesday is capital T U E S period. February is capital F. EB period. And yes, it's important. If the word you're abbreviating is capitalized, the abbreviation has to be capitalized too. All right. So then junior is capital J R period. Now minutes does not get a capital. It's just M I N period. You'll notice a trend here. Everything gets period. Number seven ounces is one of the weird ones. It's O Z period. Now, kilograms is metric. Kilo metric system is the only thing that doesn't get periods. So kilograms is just kg. Milligrams would be me mg. Um, centigrams would be cg. Okay, so and they don't get a period. Number nine, Reverend Ellis, you abbreviate Reverend capital R E V period. Doctor is capital D R period. Yard is Y-D period. And now after Christ's birth is another weird one. It actually stands for Enno Domini, which is the year of the Lord. It doesn't get a period. It's just capital A, capital D. All right. So now fill in the circle with the sense that uses the commas correctly. In number 13, you should have chose the first one. 14 is also the first one. 15 is the second one. 16 is the first one. 17 is also the first one, 18 is the second one, and 19 the first one. So hopefully you remembered your comma usage. This is something that you're going to have to know, especially if you intend to go to college and you're going to be taking the SAT or the ACT. There are questions on comma usage. All right, so that's why we practice that a lot. Now this next part um, it's been a long time since we talked about persuasive writing and, um, and propaganda usage. So you may not have remembered this, but number 20 is a testimonial and that's a t caller testimonial because it's somebody telling you their story. 21 is name calling because they are saying that only cool kids, well, wait, cool kids shop rock and rivets for the latest fashions. I wouldn't have picked name calling for that one. That's promises and flattery, in my opinion, because if you shop there, you're going to be cool. The book says testimony, says name calling. So I would take either name calling or promises on that one, because in my opinion, they're saying that if you shop there, you'll be cool. That's how I would analyze that. Uh, 22 is bandwagon. Hurry up before they're all gone. Everybody's crazy for it. That's definite bandwagon. 23, work every day and you will be the envy of your classmates. Definitely promises. They're promising you that you'll be the envy. So then you're completing the, the Venn diagram with hamburgers and hot dogs. Of course, hamburgers are made of beef and they are flat and round. Hot dogs are made of pork and they are long and cylindrical. Those are the differences. Now you could have put made of beef in the middle because I know I get beef hot dogs. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes we buy beef hot dogs. So you can have hot dogs out of beef. So that could have gone in the middle. They're both served on the bun. Best cook on the grill is up to you. Hot dogs, not everybody likes hot dogs on the grill. Uh, my son, actually, my little boy prefers the microwaved over on the grill, which I think is crazy. But 
you know, to each his own. You might like your hot dogs boiled or fried, um, but I think we could all agree that hamburgers are best on the grill. Um, so how you filled that out is probably sort of up to your opinion. So now let's look to the next page. We get to start poetry. So here you have a poem called Stars. So follow with me as I read this, okay? Stars, alone in the night on a dark hill with the pines around me spicy and still. And a heaven full of stars over my head, white and topaz and misty red. Myriads with beating hearts of fire that eons cannot vex or tire. Up the dome of heaven, like a great hill, I watch the marching stately and still. And I know that I am honored to be witness of so much majesty. I love poetry. It like gives me all the feels. That poem makes me think of looking at the sky on a peaceful night, especially when we're camping. Oh, I hope we get to go camping this summer. All right, so look with me on page 103 and 104 because this is going to be your assignment today using the thesaurus. Now this is sort of review in a way because we've already used the thesaurus in class. I remember doing a lesson previously on the thesaurus. So this is review. Now you know that in the back of your workbook you have a thesaurus, but it might not always have the words that you're looking for. So since we're home, you don't have access to the class thesaurus. Your, your home might have a thesaurus. You could ask your parents if they happen to have one. A lot of households have a dictionary and a thesaurus on the bookshelf. If not, you can also go online. So you can use your phone or your Chromebook and you can do a Google search for thesaurus and you go to thesaurus.com and it'll function the same way you type in the word and it'll give you all your options. And sometimes it'll give you more options than you ever wanted. Um, so you can go online and use the online thesaurus if you need to. All right, so writers use tool, writers, the tools of writers are words. That's one of the reasons I think why I like writing so much and reading is because I love words and I love all the wonderful ways that you can put them together. Um, I have a lot in common with, um, with Anne of Green Gables because of that. A thesaurus gives you common words and gives you synonyms. Now remember, synonyms have like meanings. It'll also give you antonyms, but it'll label those as antonyms. And antonyms, remember, are of different meanings. Um, so the synonym that, okay, let's see here. A thesaurus gives you co common words, and then it lists synonyms of the words. The thesaurus entry tells us that funny is an adjective, and it'll define the word. It might give you a simple sentence, and then it lists the synonyms and antonyms. So synonyms of funny would be amusing or humorous. So over here in the dark orange, it gives you what a typical thesaurus entry would look like. It says that it's an adjective. It gives you the noun, the definition. Then it gives you a bunch of synonyms and then some antonyms. So when you're writing poetry, you have to pick just the right word. And that's tricky sometimes. But so, and that's what we're talking about here with this guide to practice. Another thing that you'll find that is really fun that you can do online is there is such a thing as a rhyming dictionary where you can type in a word and get a bunch of words that rhyme with it. So we might end up using that later when we actually start writing our own poems. So they want us to compare the two poems. The speaker imagines the beautiful shells they find. Which poem uses the more interesting words? Which poem has more sound and rhythm in its words? So underline some of the words that give the poem its appeal. So I'm going to read them both to you. But what I want you to do is after I read them, when you're working on this on your own, you're going to look them back over and you're going to pick out which one you think is better. You're going to underline some of the interesting words, put a star on it. And that way, when you email it to me, I can tell which one you chose. Okay, so I'll read them both to you so you can get kind of an idea of the rhythm. So seashells, shattered castles around my feet, fragments of royal homes, pieces of palace bored on the tide, washed to the shore in foam. Surely a king must have stored his jewels in this tunnel of polished pearl. And maybe that scalloped ivory cup belonged to a duke or an earl. Surely a queen must have lined her walls with these delicate speckled tiles who built the homes that the reckless sea has smashed and scattered for miles. All right, so here's another version of seashells. 
broken castles around my feet, broken pieces of royal homes, bits of castles carried on the water, washed to the shore in the water. Maybe a king kept his jewels in this smooth, hollow shell, and maybe this white cup belonged to an important ruler. Surely a queen lined her walls with these small spotted tiles who built the homes that the sea has broken and left lying on the shore. All right, so pick which one you think is better. Underline some of the really descriptive words. Give it a star. And so when you show me this in the email, I'll be able to tell which one you like better. So let's look at the next page and what else you're going to be doing. So the first part of the independent practice is going to have you looking up words and giving suggestions. So pick the ones that would fit best in the sentence. Use your gloss, your, if you can use your thesaurus in the back of the book, if these words are in there, or you can use your online thesaurus, okay? Then you're going to read the following poems, and again, you're doing the same thing. You're going to look up and replace the word with something that you think fits better. Now, there's no right or wrong answer to these. Some words are better than others, but you guys might have different answers, and that's okay. Then the apply and write, I want you to write one or two sentences telling something you like about one of your friends and use the thesaurus to find at least one really interesting word. Try writing a rhyming couplet. Now we know couple means two. A rhyming couplet is two lines that rhyme. So you have to have one sentence and the next sentence and both of them have a rhyme at the end. Okay, so that's a rhyming couplet, two sentences that rhyme at the end. So you can try that and see how it goes. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing your answers to that one. And that is your grammar assignment today. So I will see you again very soon. Bye.